Yo, what's poppin'? You already know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J Hill, is in the building. Uh, J Hill Podcast. Um, special, but different, but unique, but kind of the same guest I got with me today. Uh, I'm going to shoot at pronouncing his name. Poncho. Poncho, you got it. I yeah. got it right? What's good, yeah. What's poppin'? Yeah. How you feeling, man? I'm great. You? Uh, I'm good. I, um, preparing for this interview was kind of different. Yeah? How so? Yeah, you could turn your mic, man. My Just, fault. Yeah. No, you good, you good, you good. Um... Cause one, every time I look up your name and like look up an interview from you, mm -hmm. it's like somebody else. I think it's like a, 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 a older guy. Like I don't know. What you mean? L.A. I put Poncho interview. Oh yeah, and yeah. It's yeah. like it's not you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ponchos. Yeah, there's a ton of different Ponchos out there that I'm not at the top yet. So that's so, the goal. But yeah, YouTube is lit. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Your YouTube is crazy. Yes, sir. So preparing for this interview, I was like, all right, um, where do I fucking start? Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I did do a lot of like, I did some research on like other YouTubers mm -hmm. just so I could have an understanding of the game. Got you, yeah. Do you feel like, before we even get into the music, we know you're mm -hmm. doing music and stuff, right? Yeah. Do you feel like YouTube is a job that people will overlook and downgrade a lot? And downgrade? Yeah, like downgrade. Like look down? Yeah, look uh, down I mean, way. in a way, yeah. But I mean, there's definitely people that look at it like, oh, you can profit off this. If you know what you're talking about, you know that YouTubers make, you know, a decent amount and you can do a lot of fun things with the platform. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, in a way, it kind of gets looked down on, but not not to a like high level or anything like that. Nah. Decent amount of money is an understatement. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. It's an yeah. understatement. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that it's not ourselves, we had to compare the amount of money that you guys make, the good ones, right? Mm -hmm. Compared to what you're doing and the labor that you're doing. Not taking oh, away from the labor. Yeah. It's like, but it's fun though. It's yeah, it's, it doesn't even feel like a job really at all. This is crazy. Yeah, bro. Yo, how did you even fall into this i saw one of your, your first video was COVID. Called, you did a reaction of like uh um or you was it was a some was it a lady it was like yeah 10 million vegan views. teacher lady yeah yep. vegan teacher yeah. there we go yeah how the like what, what so how i started out how i started out was i made the channel um or i had already had the channel when covid hit mm -hmm. but i was only at like 200 subscribers type shit and it was or kind of cuss uh -huh. cool. yeah, yeah, yeah um just 200 subscribers and i was just kind of not really knowing what to pick with what i wanted to do with youtube but um i met this guy named cyrus who was a big help and he helped me out kind of know what i have to make videos on and not really even know what i have to make videos on but just like yo this will work type mm -hmm. thing um so i just started looking at a bunch of different trending memes uh just things i saw on the internet that caught my interest and i would just react to it and people were kind of lashing on to my reactions because sometimes i'd be like i'd just roast it or i'd just have fun you know what i'm saying so it started out with just going towards a bunch of different memes but then i landed on her and that was actually the one that blew up my channel pretty much so and it just went boom 10 million views so at the time so i kind of skipped a little bit so I went from 200 subscribers to around 30K just off of a bunch of random topics that I would talk about here on the channel. And at around the time I did the vegan teacher video, it had brought my channel from 30K to 300K in around two weeks, <laughs> which was, yeah. And, and at the time, you know, it was, it was like around 20,000 subscribers a day at one point, and I had 20,000. So you know, the slope was kind of just like, you know, it was interesting and had me starstruck, really. Yo, what the, f like, like, when you start, was this something that you wanted to do? Like, was this intentional? Like, Yeah, I yeah, I yeah, yeah I love, I, I've watched YouTubers my whole life. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely had, like, you know, I was with the whole YouTube thing. I liked the idea of being a YouTuber and, yeah, so it, it fell into place. What was you doing before that? Oh, working full time and doing college. Did you finish college? No. Nah. You know, it's funny. One thing that I've um, seen that was constant a little bit uh, mm -hmm. was like, and this is interesting to me. Mm -hmm. I want to take my time with this because Mr. Beast. Yeah. 
um, what's his name? Pootie Pie. Pootie Pie. Yeah. Pootie Pie. Yeah. I don't know about Jake Paul. The, I don't know about the, low, low, the uh, Paul brothers, but <laughs> Pootie Pie and, and, and Mr. Beast for sure. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at the interviews and they didn't they they didn't finish school. Yeah. They they stopped school to do the YouTube uh-huh. thing and their parents thought it was crazy. And yeah. I thought it was interesting because I'm like, look at these. Just being honest, being frank. Yeah. Look at these white boys that we always think like are you know upper echelon uh-huh. had it good and their their background probably was good, but they yeah. did say. They took a leap of faith on their own. And I thought mm-hmm. it was interesting because it's like, these guys yeah. ain't finished school. You hear so many rappers and just African-American uh, people, men and women say how they quit something and chase their dreams and we see it. Mm-hmm. And I seen these guys, I thought it was interesting because I'm like, I, I don't, yeah, I leaps don't a leap. but a I didn't. A leap's a leap. Yeah, yeah. If you, you take, because I mean? yeah, no, that's, I had to take a leap by quitting my job because mm. I hadn't even blown up yet when I quit. I was at like, I think 25K when I quit or something like that, right before. So it was, it, it fell into place. You know what I'm saying? I had to take the leap of quitting my job because, you know, my parents never really like gave me everything. You know what I'm saying? They made me work for everything I have. So, you know, um, quitting that was not in my, you know, natural behavior. I was like, all right, I want to take this to the next level, but I have to do this to be able to do that. So at 25K subscribers on YouTube. Mm-hmm. What was going? What made you say I'm gonna quit at 25k? Well, it was making me already like a grand and a half a month, and I was living in Kansas, right? So six hundred dollar rent, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 it's survivable, so that's why I was like, all right, I'm gonna take a risk with this. I can always get a new job if it doesn't work, but I wasn't thinking that, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I mean, that's that that was the main reason why I was just like, all right, I have faith in this, and I'm making enough money to survive you at know least to like pay my rent exactly okay that, exactly. that makes sense that makes sense yes sir so damn that, that's that's super dope so i was watching um watching a a jake paul interview with uh yeah. i am athlete mm-hmm. and, and one thing that stood out to me another thing that stood out to me was how he was saying you know it's different type of youtubers right all different types so you got like i guess he was trying to say like the easy way out people take and that's like doing the children content because so many, yeah, so many yeah, children consumers. Yeah. And then you I think have, he did that even at one point. Mm. He was doing like real, not child oriented videos, but like videos where he's just having fun at his crib, doing a bunch of things like riding skateboards everywhere. You know what I'm saying? That then kids gravitate towards, gravitate towards that type of content. How do you differentiate the the two from like <laughs> somebody that's intentionally trying to do something for children just to get their subs and get the money up than somebody that's really creating this? This content from the heart or from the soul, I guess, like genuine content. Real ones can always tell. Mm-hmm. Real ones can always tell. Like I can look at a video right now and be like, ah, oh, this is geared towards kids. You know what I'm saying? But um, I mean, is is that's a good question because it's it's sometimes hard to differentiate them. Sometimes you can you'll see some YouTubers that are so in the act that you can't tell if it's authentic or not. You know what I'm saying? But so that's why I have a question that because like yeah. honestly, anytime like. And this is probably my ignorance, and yeah. I don't want to offend nobody or anything. But when I look at a, a Pootie Pie, right? Granted, this mm-hmm. guy probably number two, three all the time. Yeah, YouTube, something like right? that. I think he was one at one point, but right. he got taken. Yeah, and he makes kind of sort of what you like. You're not playing a game, but mm-hmm. you're doing reaction videos. He yeah. playing a game. Yes, and it, and it's like, bro, what the hell? Like mm-hmm. what? What type of you you might can explain it to me. What type of effort is is put into that? I'll keep it real. Like I play video games, I record it, and I'll talk over it. Like the effort is see with with the consumers that are watching these types of content, they they look at that and they're they're entertained by that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because say you get a bunch of people who play that game but are also interested by the content. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? What I'm talking about. It's like a win win. They get to watch that. And also hear about the topic I'm talking about, but also I don't have to go through the process of buying like film equipment and having to show. I mean, now I show my face, obviously, because I want to reach a higher ceiling. But, um, you know, uh, I just lost my complete train of thought there. What was you were saying that um, I was asking I, the effort and, and going. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like it, it's really not too much effort. I'll keep it real. I, I, at the in the beginning, but I would I would put most of my effort into the editing because I edit all my videos as well. Okay, but if you I'm thinking like if you plan a game, it's like mm-hmm. strictly just 
how do you edit that? Because like, like, so what I would do, so what I would do is whatever I'm talking about, I'm usually pretty enthusiastic with whatever I'm talking about because it piques my interest. So say like when I get loud at some point, I'll like quickly zoom in. You know okay. what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like a, it's like a, it's moving with my energy. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how I edit my videos. I tried to edit or hire an editor at one point, but they just they don't didn't. It. They don't get it. It's like, exactly. Bro, what the fuck is wrong? Exactly. So. At least somebody understand my pain. Yeah, I'm bro. I'm I'm nitpicky with this shit. So yo, that's cra you know what's crazy, bro? What it remind me of? And yeah. I know some people might say this a reach, but because you know some people, they were saying like a lot of sometimes kids are, are watch people play the game mm -hmm. and they telling you how to beat the game and they telling you that the, the obstacles and things like, like that in the mm -hmm. game. It reminds me of uh, sports. Yeah, I'll tell you why. Because I I think if I'm not mistaken, we can Google it. We could do a fact check. But I think um, the second when it comes to viewers, right? Mm -hmm. In the sports world, mm -hmm. you have the, the game itself. Yeah. Right after that is the commentary, like is the uh, yeah. the, the, the sports yeah. shows. Yeah. And I'm like, I was talking to um, somebody the other day and they was like, yo, imagine if we could have, because my favorite show is uh, Skip and Shannon. Mm -hmm. He was like, bro, imagine if we could have Skip and Shannon during the game. I'm like, I don't think I would like that. Then I was doing, because I'm like, I want to, I want more content to watch. Yeah. I want to watch the game and then right after that, I'm watching Skip and Shannon. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm doing some, the research on the YouTube stuff and I'm like, yo, you know what this remind me of? Hmm. If Skip and Shannon was commentating during the game and I'm like, okay, I can see why people are interested because yeah. if somebody is interested in, I don't know, Call of Duty, mm -hmm. imagine if your favorite YouTuber or somebody that's really into that game talking to you about the game, like, facts, Man. Yeah, and there's, and there's like, now there's like esports and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Like internet or not internet, um like video game tournaments and stuff like that and they have commentators i mean i got some opinions about that it's it's dope at the end of the day um some something funny about it with the commentators well, what's your what's your opinion because i'm curious to know. <laughs> yeah i mean it's dope right it's dope um i think i think a lot there's there's like kind of like a a little bit of like an enabling culture to just kind of be just chill but that's enabling, that's a, that, but there's but there's definitely what do you mean by that enabling code? like 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 within the gaming community i'm not even talking about just esports in general i'm talking about the gaming community it's kind of enabling culture to 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 not not be lazy but just kind of chill out a little bit um especially now with me being a youtuber in the community i can kind of see like the the atmosphere a lot different now um, but at the end of the day, you know, they're just having fun. They're just playing video games and winning money. So I'm gonna tell you my opinion. Yeah. I fucking hate it. Yeah. I'm jealous. I'm not yeah. even gonna lie. It's like, yeah, bro, I play I'm jealous too. I won't lie. I'm jealous too. No, you're doing something similar. It's not, but, you're not playing but game. they're winning like, they're winning like $5 million each sometimes. But even still, I'm looking at bro. Yeah. I'm thinking about all of the effort that I got to put in mm -hmm. to get one video, mm -hmm. one video. Yeah. It's a lot of effort. And I'm looking at a motherfucker play the game or do a reaction video to, to a video that's already done. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah. Do you get people like sometimes that send you their videos already and be like, yo, can you do a reaction video to me? Or, uh, I get a few. Do I you get do a few. It? Uh, really. the, uh, some of them are obviously like just people trying to get attention, but. At one point in time, you did, I think you said this on your YouTube. I didn't even know y'all could do that. It's kind of like what? a Twitter feed, kind of. Oh, the community tab? Yeah. Yeah. I think you said, um, <laughs> and mind the shift, we're going to go back, but I want to skip ahead for a second. Yeah. At one point, you was going to, um, you was thinking about quitting. Yeah. You was burnt out, right? Yeah. We're going to go there for a second, but pause. But then you came back and said, no, nah, I'm not going to quit. Yeah. I'm going to just create content that I genuinely That I about. like. Right. Yeah, because at a point, I was kind of, not making content that I didn't enjoy, but I was listening to the audience a little bit too much. I was like, I'm just, I was chasing the views at one point. I'll keep it real. Okay. Um, and I found that, you know, my happiness was going down. I was just like, I'm not really, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I'm blessed, right? I'm not, I'm not going to ever forget like where I am, but you know, I got wrapped into it. You know what I'm saying? So at a point I was just definitely kind of burning out and not really enjoying the content I was making. In terms of just the topics I was talking about, you know, I would still have some some fun on my episodes, but now I'm definitely looking at things I'm more interested in. 
You know okay. what I'm saying? So that would be kind of like the equivalent of somebody saying, yo, I'll pay you to do this reaction video. Mm -hmm. Fuck it, I'll do it for the money. Yeah. Okay. Or like equivalent to like an artist making like a like a random hit that they don't want to make that was pushed by label. You know what I'm saying? I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. So um, speaking of burning out, right? Mm -hmm. I heard um, Jake Paul like, man, y'all don't understand the effort that goes into this. I did a video for 800 days straight. Say it again. I think he said he did a video. He did videos for 800 days straight yeah. consecutively. I'm thinking that's like two and a half years. Yeah. Looking at you, at one point you did the same thing, kind of. He was like you was doing Type, videos yeah. two and a half years straight. Mm -hmm. So I can understand how you could get burnt out from that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and it, it becomes like a process of where like I would go to sleep and I'd see my video editor like in like you know what I'm saying like I would I would I would be so in grind mode you know what I'm saying that you know. I didn't know how to maintain balance. Right now, I'm still in grind mode, mm -hmm. but I have balance in my life. You know what I'm saying? I, I try to work out every day now. I try to, Same. you know, fix my life so it can, so I can keep that going while not going crazy. You know what I'm saying? What made you realize that you had to do something else? Because I'm in that state right now. Um, that's a good question. I guess I, um, I definitely took a break. I definitely took like a week long break and I just kind of sat there with myself to just plan this out again. And, you know, I said I quit because that was an impulse thought. And I was just like, all right, I'm going to just I'm going to just quit and do the music. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't. I, I after I after it sat with me longer, I'm like, that just doesn't make sense. I, I have this platform and I, I have fun with it, too. So there's no reason why I should quit. But to answer your question, I just kind of let my thoughts marinate you know what i'm saying um uh i definitely i definitely was not as as confident either because i was just like so focused on this that i was ignoring so many other parts of my mm -hmm. life and i just needed to get back to that especially family i was i was distancing myself from a lot of close people so it was just remembering what i had really that's kind of how i how I went back to finding my balance. It's crazy because I think um, for me, I was getting so consumed into my content that like I wanted to take a step back. Yeah. And I remember like when because I, I play uh, house, I played football up until like college. Okay. And I just remember I had a routine and I wasn't really worried too much. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I went to school, mm -hmm. I got good grades, but I, I think I wasn't really worried because I was so busy. Yeah. And like granted I'm busy in my content, but it's only one thing. Like back in like back when I was going to school, it was so many things. I'm like, man, I gotta go to the gym just to get my flow back. Yeah. And that's why I was wondering, like, can, do you think you was burnt out because you was just only doing this one thing and you wasn't you wasn't tending to every uh, other things in your life? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Cause like I, I got a pretty addictive personality. So whenever something's like working i'm all in you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying i was real invested in this youtube thing at one point not that i'm not anymore but way more than i am now like that's that's a great segue right yeah one thing that i've noticed because i've um like i said i was just uh looking at all of the top mm -hmm. like top 10 youtubers yeah. right and one thing that i noticed was it was a shift because everybody always say man i was recording every day every day every day yeah but now you look at the YouTube channels, even yours yeah. included, it goes from every day to like once a week. Once a week, or yep. now even like it'd be like twice a month. Yeah. And they so, still doing good. I'm like what like, Yep. So basically that's a privilege to have. A a big privilege to have if you're a YouTuber, because that means that your audience is stuck there. Like, you know what I'm saying? But it, it basically what a, a trend that YouTubers are doing nowadays is they're, as you said, going from daily to weekly to monthly even. And it's because they're they're doing more long long form content. Mm. Because one, if you do long form content, you make more ads. You get more ads on the video, make more money, which basically can mean a whole long video can equal seven short videos. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's it's just better for their time, probably better for their mental health, even. You know what I'm saying? So it's just more beneficial for YouTubers to do that. That's mm -hmm. what I would assume, at least. I don't do it. And you, well, I mean, it looks Ty, like kind of, kind of. I I try to go like three, four a week. Okay. Yeah. Three, four a week. Mm -hmm. Cause I was looking at it, it like what the last video you did? What, what last video you did? Uh, I responded 
back to the uh, vegan lady. The vegan lady, right? Because she came back. <laughs> that was what? How long ago was that? Like three days ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I seen that. She tells yep. you like, I seen it. Yeah. I seen it. Man, that's cool, bro. Do you, so let me ask you, who you think your, uh, your top, who are the top five YouTubers? Um, I like, I like, um, Danny Duncan. He's a, he's a YouTuber. He just does things just everywhere. He'll, he'll go in public and do things. I like Nelk a lot. Nelk's got a cool big brand. Um, I can't say I watch much of their videos anymore, but I like them at one point a lot. Um, I like, I mean, nowadays I'm really just watching interviews. Mm. I'll keep it real. I mean, I, I've, uh, the the YouTube sphere I was really into in terms of being a consumer like maybe two years ago, but now I just watch. So who's top, top five YouTubers if you had to say? <sighs> Probably like you know one I like I like um, Danny Duncan. I said I put him at top. He's great content. Better than Mr. Beast? Yeah, yeah. Because Mr. Beast, oh, it's it's not that his is like fabricated content it's just very organized you know what i'm saying and that's dope that's it's dope it'd be entertaining right it'd be entertaining when he has like millions of dollars but to me it's just like all right that shit well, is next level yeah it is next level i just found out about him for real literally for real like even he used to do videos that i make he used to make reaction videos and then he went from that to a bunch of other things that segued way into that okay so nope who else uh I'll throw Mr. Beast in there because he's because he's because I respect him. Um, back when I was watching like gaming content, um, I used to watch Technoblade a lot. R.I.P. Um, who else? Uh, I said Nelk, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You said Nelk, Gaming Blade, I think. Technoblade. Technoblade. Yep. And Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast. And I know I said four. Um, who's two more though? It's hard, bro, because I don't, I don't be watching. You gotta, I don't, you gotta throw it out there. I don't, I don't be. Um, no, no, no. You gotta throw it out there. Let's say, let's say, I like No Jumper a lot. No I like Jumper. No Jumper a lot. Um. So you would throw? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. No Jumper. Um. I'm trying not to choose like hip hop uh, channels. Uh, actually, not Hello Yasin. I like Hello Yasin too. Okay, so He's, you threw no jumper. That that kind of threw me off because I'm thinking like YouTubers, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Out of the five people you named, this is something that I, I was curious about. Mm -hmm. Is any of them black? Uh, no, no, no. Nope. Do you think it's a uh, a correlation to the successful YouTube stars and the what is it Eth ethnicity? Because all of the top ten is are white. And then mm. when I, I ha I literally have to go to top 10. Yeah, there's Latin definitely, YouTubers. I would, I would argue there's, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. I'm curious. That, like, I don't know how I can't even, I couldn't even break it down. For it's you. like, I want to have a conversation about that, but I just don't even know what. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But you are a Hispanic descent, correct? Yes. Yeah. Ecuadorian. So I, I mean, like my cousin. So like, you feel me? Like, yeah. it's a, kind oh, of yeah. a win. <laughs> what's, what's your nationality? I'm black. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean Hispanic. Black yeah. Oh, okay, okay. You know I, I thought I thought you were saying you was <laughs> so, Hispanic I mean, or something. You feel me? Like, oh, I, yeah. I don't shy away from these conversations. I hope I don't make you uncomfortable. Nah, nah, I'm chilling. But um, I was looking and I'm like, damn, like all of these motherfuckers are white, and I'm just curious to know, is it any type of correlation? Is it anything that they're doing different? Do we make no, different content? Or are there any black YouTubers that's doing similar content? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I follow plenty actually. Name I mean, me one. Kai Sinat. Kaisenat. I mean, he doesn't. He does reaction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Kaisenat. Okay. Duke Dennis. Um, I show speed. Speed's okay. a big one. He just blew up a huge amount. But he's he's a little crazy. He'd be raging and stuff, and he'd be playing video games and going crazy. Okay. That's but those are those are a few. I watch. You trying to make this this switch to music? Yeah. We've seen again. You gotta give it to the Paul Bros because they like doing their thing. Yeah, they, I feel like they're, they're doing their thing. I feel like yeah. they would be. And again, I just started looking to YouTube. You're mm -hmm. a big part of it. Just me doing mm -hmm. my research. If I'm mm -hmm. wrong, you can correct me. Is ignorance is bliss, so I don't really know too much. But it looks like they 
Jake Paul specifically yeah. is really pioneering this this shift for YouTubers. Like you can do it because he's taking his boxing yeah. thing real. Yeah. And I mean, of course, from Jake Paul. You got DDG. D, I was just about to mention. Yeah. But I mean, who's doing it bigger than Jake Bigger Paul? than, yeah. You know on, on, on mass scale, I'd argue Jake Paul. Yeah. So, but, right? Then I think, I'm like, all right, hold up. It might not be YouTube. And when I listen to your mm -hmm. music, again, it might be a stretch, but it was like got like melody type music, right? Mm -hmm. Melodic, and, yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I know a little something, something. I was like, you know who else did it? It wasn't YouTube, but it was television. Say it again. It wasn't YouTube, but it was television. You better talk about Drake. Drake, yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think about that. So yeah. I'm looking at these guys and I'm like, damn, like a couple people, Quinn like, Naja, not too many people. It's almost like the new age type type television. My question is, why? You got you got everything you everything you need because right here. You making your money. This is yeah. you, you're dominating this sport right here. Yeah. Why? Why? Because I love music. I've been making music for around eight years now. I went from producing to engineering to not liking what they put on my beats. So I started doing them. So mm -hmm. I started hitting my own beats. And I've been doing it for uh, since middle school. So you've been doing music before you even started? Before I did YouTube. YouTube. And I was doing it relatively seriously before I did YouTube. I used to sell beats before I did YouTube mm -hmm. on, a, on a BeatStars, like a little website. So it's safe to say YouTube is something that literally like fell in your life. It, COVID, I'm telling you, like COVID was definitely like a pressure to like, oh, I lost my job. Um, I need to do something. You know what I'm saying? So YouTube was was that. Well, I still had a passion for it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I seen a, a, a TikTok the other day. It said it was a question of if you needed to pay your rent yeah. in two days, what would you do? I mean, I mean, granted, you gotta wait for the check yeah. for YouTube, but shit, it sounds like that's something that you can pick up and do. But yeah, it's not that easy though. I mean, I did it through. I did it with a laptop, just with a laptop and a microphone. So maybe six hundred dollars in total. Mm. And I and I kept that laptop until I was at five hundred k. Damn. So and and it used to be my mom's laptop this is until crazy. I bought it off her. So I didn't really have, I mean, I'll keep it real. You don't need a lot. You don't. Because the content nowadays with, with the consumers, they don't, they don't need a whole lot. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's YouTubers out there succeeding that are putting, putting in five times less effort than I am and five times bigger. Mm. It's just all over the place now. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I mean, I'd argue you don't need a lot. So you never thought about, because when I look for your music, I literally have to put poncho music. Yeah. Yeah. You never thought about trying to like integrate the music into the YouTube channel? See, I thought about it and I still kind of have this debate, but I just, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty unsure on it. I'm, I'm just not sure really because, because of the fact that the audience came for that type of content, you know what I'm saying? But I also have, you know, another opinion. Oh, no. Nah, I mean, all my videos do pretty well over time. They're probably there for me as well. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it's it's i mean i might eventually i might eventually but i'm still i'm still stuck on it my Keep opinion it right again not to offend you or anything i feel yeah. like when people say that they love something yeah i feel like you can see it and yeah. not saying that i can't see it from you right yeah. but i just feel like i've interviewed so many people trying to change over hairstyle trying to be do music uh mm -hmm. youtubers want to do music mm -hmm. and i look at that page and the first thing i look at i see like their page still look like a like IG model. They still look like whatever they did at first, it looked like that's what they did, right? Mm -hmm. But I think about when when you're when you love something and you're doing it, you do it, like you said, two and a half years straight, right? You've been doing yes. music for eight years, like yeah. you said, but yeah. it's like were you not putting the same effort in that you was putting in to the YouTube that you did music? Because clearly you put some type of effort into YouTube and it popped. And I feel like if you did the same thing with music, it would do the same I, thing. See, with music, I was putting in efforts in areas that weren't that beneficial. Like, yeah, I was but. I was going through, um, you know, like, little online hip-hop producing communities okay. and just getting lost in them, you know what okay. I'm saying? And okay. I wasn't, I, you know, a traditional artist would go to an open mic. They'd go to a bunch of different things. I just kind of, I got lost in the sauce of the internet, you know what I'm saying? So that's why... 
it's been taking a while and now it's finally at a point where i'm like oh i should have just been doing the, the the basics the entire time setting your foundation as an artist all that type of stuff so that's that's the explanation for that i can understand i can kind of understand that though now you put things in perspective because mm-hmm. like it sounds like all the top YouTubers, I mean, again, I don't know about Jake Paul and Logan Paul, but mm. from Pudi, PewDiePie, yeah. Pudi, what is it? PewDiePie. PewDiePie, yeah. Mr. Beast, right? Two of the biggest mm-hmm. YouTube stars. They was really like introverts. Yeah. I, I could kind of yeah. see you yeah, I'm like a little bit being of an, an introvert, introvert yeah. right? Yeah. And you're trying to get your music to pop, but you're trying to, to do it in a way that's comfortable. Exactly. For you. And I got lost in that. I was like, I was, I was expecting a result when I wasn't, you know, putting and it that, in. That give that makes I've been going through the trials. That shows how, but that shows how you were so successful in the, the content of the YouTube content because you really don't have to be outside. Yeah, and it also shows that I love music because I'm not I'm I'm eight years in after so many failures that I still want I still want it bad. Facts. I still I still I don't know, because they don't want to fuck with the money. But it's like, mm-hmm. man, if you really love music, put that shit in your on your YouTube. Yeah, Give see, it a try. It won't hurt. I'm so calculated, bro. And sometimes I think that's a detriment. But, and yeah, it, it really wouldn't hurt. Um, but something about, something about, see, with the internet and YouTube videos, the odds of something blowing up, it's so randomized, and you know what I'm saying? So sometimes I have the thought of if you just put it on a fresh account, it just has more potential for longevity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I sure, I could get 100,000 views if I upload it on the YouTube channel. But how long will it stay at that 100,000 views because of the audience expecting a gaming video? Mm. You know what I'm saying? There's just so many things in between that, you know. And you know, that YouTube got like the, like you said, YouTube is like the the, the new age new, television. New television, yeah. You can utilize the uh, the playlist because like you could kind of like make playlists where it's like different shows. So like mm-hmm. poncho reactions. Yeah, poncho but, but that's not what the majority of your audience is looking at. They're looking at their subscription feed. Of all the YouTubers they follow. Okay. I mean, if they're really into you, they'll, they'll look at your playlists. But, I mean, the most viewed playlist I have is like 800,000 of people going through that playlist 800,000 times. But my most viewed video is 10 million. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And that 800,000 is over the span of two years. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And the, that 10 mil video is just 11 months ago. So, what about... So, this is another thing that, I, that I've uh, peeped yeah. just in my research. So like Mr. Beast, right? Mm-hmm. These YouTubers, once they get to a certain level, they have different YouTube accounts. So like he yeah. has a yeah, uh, they uh, diversify. Oh uh, uh, yeah, they expand. But it's, it's theirs. Yeah. On yours, right at the bottom, your channels, or that's you. I don't know if it's that you follow or you created. It. Mm-hmm. It's not Poncho Music. Yeah, yeah, I had it. I had it in there a little bit. I'm definitely gonna throw it back. I've been trying to find little passive ways to promote the music on the channel while not being too in your face because I feel like a little it can kill the channel. Right. But a poncho, you know your music channel being at the bottom, like a I guess one of your channels, that wasn't yeah. it, right? Yeah, I, I did that at one point and I think I yeah, I should do it again. So I how much do you should. love this music thing? I love it. It's just I'm so I'm I'm very I'm very um Strategic. Yeah, and, and as I said earlier, sometimes I think that's a detriment. Sometimes I think I need to look at things more more simple. You know what I'm saying, but that's that's just my my thought process through all of it. I saw one of your videos. Um, I don't know the exact name of it. It got like ten thousand views. So like, and that was by itself. You literally had to search Poncho Music. Yeah, and it got ten thousand views. That's not. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, I know you get ten million, but nah. 10, but that ten thousand is. I love that. I <laughs> I, I value that ten thousand more than I do every single one of my videos. Mm. What, what was the name of that song? Uh, out of me, it probably it probably had uh, 10k. That, wait, did you look at it recently? Yeah, it was like 10. It might be low. It might be low by me. A song called Low. Okay, okay. Yeah. I know it was 10,000. I thought it was, I was like, this is interesting because mm-hmm. it's, it's not connected to your YouTube channel at yeah. all. And I'm like, and it's actual people who are there for like for oh, this is a great song. You know, I have positive feedback for the actual content that they're looking at, not like oh, this YouTuber makes great music. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So. That's yeah. What you think is harder? Hmm? What you think is harder? YouTube or making music? Mm. Harder. YouTube. Mm. Music's just a flow for me. If I get in it, mm. I got to tap into that flow though. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So you think YouTube easier? Harder? Yeah, it's definitely easier. But 
in terms of like both as career options, I'd say I'm going to have to put a lot more effort in the music mm -hmm. because that comes with performing. That comes with a whole bunch of other things. And YouTube, for me, it just came with sitting and talking. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Do you just part of my follow up? But do you think it could be two goats? Two goats? Yeah. Great just of, in general. Greatest of all time. Do you think? Just curious. No. No? All right. So. I, uh, see, my go I, I, I can only have one goat. Okay. I mean, I can respect somebody who's like, I like these two the same. But for me, I have one goat. So I, I say that because I ask that question because I'm thinking, if who's the YouTube goat? Uh, uh, I mean, you could say PewDiePie, but I don't. I mean, I don't really even watch PewDiePie that much. Um, the YouTube goat. I like Jadeon a lot. I like okay. Jadeon. He's a new YouTuber, um, and he's been coming up, and he's been making a bunch of different crazy videos. And I think I think he's gonna dominate. Okay. I think he's like the so LeBron. You're speaking Japanese to me because like I really don't even know. <laughs> he's too LeBron. Much. He's you know what I'm saying. So I like I said I've just gotten into this Mr. Beast yeah. guy. Yeah. This dude is insane. I never seen nothing like it, Giant. right? But I asked that because I'm like, I asked it for mm -hmm. a couple reasons. Because one, I'm like, every time when I look up top 10 YouTubers, they all white. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, okay, but we got black YouTube creators as well. That's good. Yeah. And then I'm like, what about those who did YouTube dominated? They might not have mm -hmm. dominated as much as uh, Mr. Beast or PewDiePie, <laughs> but they crossed over. Yeah. and killed that like a Jake Paul. And I'm like, bro, yeah. that got to count for something. But yeah. it's like, can he be the GOAT? Because he didn't yeah. get bigger than the biggest person on YouTube. But he's I don't. Him. I don't use that metric. I don't use, I mean, you can use, I mean, I definitely use that metric, but it's not my top metric. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I think value of content okay. is the main. Okay. Just like how I view like a GOAT for rap. You know what I'm saying? The value of the content, not how much they're selling. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Damn. So who you think the goat in rap is? Uh, I I like I like Andre 3000. That's just me. That's just no, me. No, I like Andre 3000. Just I just wasn't expecting it. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm ignorant. Yeah, AT Aliens, all list. of it, all of it. I love Andre and Outkast too. So you think he's the goat though? Andre is great, but the yeah. goat. Uh, I mean, the goat. Come on. That's my subjective. So I mean, in terms of just like realness, hip hop. Um, Biggie. The GOAT? That's me. I mean, that's fine. That's I mean, me. It's okay. That's me. That's my... Why? Uh, Because of their technical ability. I like it. And, and the things they talk about and they rap about, I think it's a perfect blend of technical production, what they're rapping about. You know, it's a combination. It's a whole... That's just me. I'm not mad at that. Only reason I say I'm not mad at that because Drake, at one point, Drake said... It was something in his lines. He was like, we'll see who's still here 10 years from now. 10 years from now. Yeah, that's from, uh, what song is that? It's like Whatever 20, song it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. He said that, right? Yeah. He said it. Yeah. Nobody thought nothing of it. At all. Until 10, 15 years. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, he said it. <clears throat> it's the equivalent to like. Is Drake your goat? Who? Drake? Nah. Nah. Okay. Probably, um. Probably would be Jay Z. Okay, I'm gonna see, tell you why I see he's Jay -Z. up there. Yeah, it would be Little yeah. Wayne. Yeah, it would be Little Wayne, but I say Jay Z because for me, I feel mm. like <laughs> Jay Z really showed his like ability to change with the time. Yeah, and like Little Wayne now, like people still liking Little Wayne, and I'm not mad at it, but mm -hmm. some of it ain't really hitting for me. To mm -hmm. be honest, I'm, some of it be hitting, yeah. but some of it be like, eh, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Jay Z, on the other hand, he's made music in each time period, and I'm like, damn! Like even four, four, four. Yeah. He's talking about music that like he's talking about things that I can relate to. He like you know you you never win when the family feud. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. thirty years old. At, I'm That's 29 a great at the time, That's a masterpiece you know album. And I'm like I'm understanding family, yeah. and it's like everything he dropped when he dropped it. I was like, damn, yeah. this is fire. That's why yeah. I say he's the goat. Yeah. But to your point, yeah, I can see why you say Biggie because. You can put in 
it was all a dream. I used to read Word Up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So and, I'm talking, and then it still hits to this day. Yeah, facts. So, Timeless music. And also just the fact that, you know, I like looking at the history mm. as well and what and who changed what to the culture, who did this and that. You know, sometimes I even think like Kendrick Lamar is taking a lot of inspiration from Andre. You know what I'm saying? And, and a lot of different figures in hip hop today look at these people like Jay-Z even, for example, and Andre. And I think that they're big, big figures. You know what I'm saying? Jay-Z and, and um, Andre be, just because of how much they've done and how much how much music they've put out, a whole whole bunch of different reasons. So. That's why I hold them really up there, you know. I think Andre uh, 3000. It's crazy because where you from? I'm from Topeka, Kansas. Kansas is again part of my ignorance. That's down. That's like southern. it's in the straight middle of the country. Oh, in the middle. Okay, cool. It's yeah. It's it's, was, oh, it's in the middle. Right. It's in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> is it so? Okay. Yeah, it's out. It's straight in the middle. Uh, yeah. So how did you become an Andre 3000 fan? Uh, definitely through um just consumption of a bunch of hip-hop music i just started listening to you know i loved i actually loved jay-z at one point okay. i loved 444 um and i just kind of came across him you know not not that i didn't know who Auscast was but andre 3000 just as a as a feature artist or just as an artist in general that's i kind of discovered him a little bit later actually fairly well not discovered him but really tuned in uh probably around like Two years ago, maybe. Okay. Yeah. No, nah, you cl you clearly didn't know who Outcast was because you said like some else. You said like I was. I don't know what the fuck you said, but it's fine. It's okay. No, no. Nah, nah, I mean, I've heard. I'm joking. I, 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 yeah. I'm joking. It's, it's <laughs> I was gonna ask you. Do you think? Because when you said Outcast, I was assuming that you might have been from down south because I feel like at one point in time and even now you see the difference of respect far as hip hop. Exactly. And like, exactly, I feel like yeah. of course, hip hop was birth. Let me get this right. It wasn't um, Brooklyn, but it was fucking the Bronx, I think. I think. Am I right? Um, fact check. I think it might have been the Bronx. Mm -hmm. Is it the Bronx? You know, right? Okay. The Bronx. So, like, yeah. So, um, hip-hop was birthed in the Bronx. So, I feel like a lot of times when people talk about these goats, when they talk about hip-hop music and real hip-hop, they equate it with northern music, specifically yeah. New York. And I feel like the South always get overlooked. So, when you yeah. say your favorite rapper or the goat, not even your and favorite rapper, when you say yeah. the goat, is Andre 3000. I'm like, damn, is he from the South? And had, did you ever look at music and be like, people were sleeping on the South when you was consuming it? See, when I was consuming, I was very oblivious to the whole regional sound thing and regional. Okay. I was very oblivious to that until only a few years ago. Mm. Um, so, you know, basically how I would just choose who I listened to was just based on, I mean, obviously the vibe but you know I, I as i said earlier andre 3000 technically was insane so that's that's kind of how i gravitated towards him and i wasn't i mean i knew about outcast and their whole impact on atl but i hadn't really uh understood it fully you know what i'm saying until recently wait bro i had to pause for a second yeah you're not about to come up here talk all this hip-hop shit with me and I think, if I'm not mistaken, I read this. I don't have my phone on me. Mm. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. He sent me this. Uh, your inspiration yeah. comes from, is it Bad Baby? Was that true? Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's weird. I just, I'd be, I'd take a bunch of different inspirations. I'm. But the GOAT is Andre 3000. For for hip-hop, yeah. That's my opinion. I, I listen to tons of different types of music. So is melodic music not hip-hop? Um, That's a good question. I'd argue it is because, you know, even you could look at Lil Baby. He's melodically rapping. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I would argue, yeah. But there are songs that are melodic and have hip-hop drums but aren't hip-hop. I would even argue a lot of my music is not hip-hop. Mm. But that's crazy because when I think of Drake, I think of hip hop. Yeah, I think of hip hop too. But I guess he was he was actually he fought for that because at one point in time they they wasn't classifying him. They were boxing them, yeah. And then people were saying he couldn't even sing. Yeah, a lot of people was hating on Drake. So like I, I yeah. mean, I guess he fought for that. 
He did. It's just when I hear of Bad Bunny and then you say he's R- reggaeton, completely yeah, different, but you say R- opposite side. And I'm like, yeah. wait, that don't even. And then it's it's weird. Yeah, shit, it's it's Biggie. Like, wait, what? Like, yeah. How do? So uh, with Bad Bunny, um, so I'm Hispanic, obviously, mm-hmm, of um, and my dad throughout my childhood would play tons of Latin music throughout the house. So I think it just kind of, I don't know, my okay. love for Hispanic music as well. It's just a big blend in my brain of, of music I love. Okay. Really. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. I'm, all right, all right. And my dad would play the guitar when I was a kid. So, you know, Bad Bunny tends to use a guitar a lot in his music and... Yeah. Would you do like some Spanish music? Say it again. Would you do Spanish music? I uh, I mean, I don't know Spanish. <laughs> I don't know Spanish. My dad never taught me Spanish. My mom's a spe- Spanish teacher, but they never taught me Spanish. That's why I asked that. <laughs> like, wait. I, I mean, I, I want to learn. I want to learn. Definitely. My parents. Um, I, I, what you waiting for? Uh, I'm busy. I'm busy. I mean, I, I'll definitely get to it. But right now, I don't know. if Spanish guy speaks no Spanish. I mean. Yeah, true. I mean, it true. Is. It's it's a little, yeah. I want to, <laughs> yeah, I definitely cool. should get on it. It's cool. Yo, I mean, so what are we doing with the music, man? Like, tell me, like, what are you working on? What's, what, so I'm working on a lot Pandora? of new stuff, a lot of new stuff. Yeah, I was just at Pandora. We had a good meeting. What um, are you doing, man? I see you running around. Dropping a new single called TNT. That's okay. going to be out in August. Okay. Um, And that's more, like, party-oriented, hype track. And I got a bunch of other singles in the vault ready. So, yeah, I mean, we got tons of music. Let me ask you something. Mm-hmm. Your singles, right? Because I feel like a lot of artists fall into this trap. Yeah. Do you think you're falling into the same trap with music that you did with YouTube? And that, what I mean by that is creating content that you know that the consumers want? Uh, That's a great question. Um, no, nah, I feel like with every project I make or every single I make or anything I make, I always, I always got to put my heart into it. Mm. So, so you're making, so I, I, that, yeah, I, cause I've already learned that lesson with YouTube to, to start going, putting your all in things. Mm. So going into the music now, I, I would say everything I made is, isn't, I don't think about, you know, oh, how are they going to receive this? How that I'm, I'm just doing what I love. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, before we get out of here, I was curious. Could you mm-hmm. say, um, little baby make melodic music? Yeah. Is Lil Baby the Wayne of our generation for real? Is he what? The Wayne of our generation? Yeah. I would argue. Hmm. I would argue. Hmm. Consistently dropping, consistently like he's he's just a beast. I'm scared to say anything bad about Lil Baby. <laughs> Lil Baby is fine. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know, bro. Tell me how you feel. I said this before. Yeah. I didn't get Drake, so I, I don't want to like repeat it because they might catch it now. But I feel like Lil Baby is fire. Yeah. But who would you comp- his music you compare is starting to? to be like yeah. sim- Re- the same yeah. now. Repetitive. Yeah, I, I've heard that too. I've heard that. I still listen to him. You know who um, I like now? Who? Money Bag. Yeah. Money Bag is growing on me. Yeah. He going crazy. I fuck with Money Bag. Uh, I'm starting to fuck with like. Detroit music too. Yeah, like Babyface. Shit going crazy. Yeah. Um, what's the nigga name? Oh, really? Doughboy. Mm. I fuck with him. Yeah, Detroit. You got um, a cool sound. Uh, Cleveland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, how far, Ohio and Detroit not too far, right? Like two hours, two and a half hours. Same I think region, so. I think. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, not too crazy, but whatever. I'm starting to like that. I, that what that might be the Midwest. Yeah. I'm starting to like that. That uh, type. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That type of vibe. Yeah, I've noticed with with. Detroit in in Chicago with uh, Chicago has drill and Dirk and all them. They use like a lot of percussion in their mm-hmm. beats, like with instead of snares. Same thing with Detroit. I've noticed they do. So it's interesting seeing their little regional sounds and how they. I personally hate drill music. I think oh yeah. Erase that. Oh shit. yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Like they should erase yeah. that shit off the out of the catalog of music. I hate it. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I just, they be talking fast. I'm like, bro, what the fuck is y'all talking? I feel old as fuck. Like, what are y'all talking about? I don't like that shit. Like, <laughs> I hate that shit. <laughs> but uh, who would I say the Lil Wayne of our generation is? Or who would you not? Who would you compare Baby to? Um, That's a good one. Damn. Would I compare him to Jeezy, though? Jeezy had a great run. I mean, I can see why somebody would say that, but. Honestly, bro, mm-hmm. 
when he was having his run, I yeah. could see why he would say Lil Wayne. Yeah. But he ain't having long enough to me, in my opinion. Nah, that, and that's valid. Opinion. That's valid. Only that's person I would compare to Lil Wayne. That's a good point. Damn, I did a... You would think I'm... This nigga's paying me today. Fuck that nigga. Only nigga I would, pay, I would compare to Lil Wayne is Drake. I'm just yeah. saying. Like, he's the only one that stood the test of time and it yeah. really showed that, nah, I'm that nigga. We gonna see who gonna be here 10 years, 10 years from, from now. now. I just and remembered. I think that's from 30 for 30. I'm not positive. And we you see it. Yeah. You see who is. Yeah. 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 Man, I appreciate you for pulling up on me. Yeah, of Poncho, course. Thanks everybody. For me I was really excited to have this conversation. Mm-hmm. Because you're Hispanic, I'm not gonna lie. Because you're yeah. YouTube, yeah. it was different. It was so different. It was like, I gotta prepare for this shit. Hell yeah. I gotta prepare <laughs> differently. I gotta look I into love this to YouTube it. shit. Hell yeah. I was excited. I was like, yo, I, I really was excited. I'm, I, and I'm glad you came. I'm yeah. glad we was able I'm to talk I about up. Yeah. Uh, very uh, different type of things, man. I wish you much, much respect. Yeah, thank I you. wish you much luck. Yeah. <laughs> you got me fumbling on my words and shit. But yeah, now nah, um, I wish you much success. Yeah, uh, anything you. that we didn't touch on that you might want to leave with the audience or anything? Do what you love. That's simple. Do what you love. He said it. Do what you love. Do what you yeah, love. You got to get your, um, your music page underneath or your YouTube and shit. Say it again. You got to get your music page underneath. Your oh, yeah. Nah, definitely. I got to do that. I don't know. Yeah, nah. Said, I, that was, see, that's like me. Times. See, that's me. That's me. That's me going like little... Little calculated mode. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I should do that. Yeah, bro, I gotta, I gotta tap out of that low key. Cause you got, I'm like, man, I was looking right. So this, I ain't gonna lie. This, mm-hmm. Ryan hit me right. He was like, yeah, you want to interview him? I'm like, YouTube, yeah, hell yeah, 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 right. Yeah. So I'm not gonna lie. First thing I was like, I right, bet. So I know YouTubers. What they do is put the like the video at the end of the videos. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I know this shit gonna go crazy. He gonna put it at the end of the videos. Mm-hmm. Then I did the research. I'm like, this nigga don't put no none of his music is. <laughs> So I was tight. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing this for? Like, I ain't going to get nothing from him. He'll put his music on his YouTube page. His YouTube page is going crazy. So I'm like, I'm looking at the numbers. I'm like, all right, bet. So we at least going to do like a 50 piece because he's going to put it on his YouTube. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah. You don't even put the... Yeah. Come on, bro. Got to. Got you got to. You got to put the link somewhere so they can see this interview. You feel me? Yeah, like, definitely. Put me on for it. <laughs> <laughs> Great talking yeah. to you, bro. Oh, yeah. For real, man. Tell oh, yeah. other people where to follow you at and all that, man. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Poncho WT, Twitter, Poncho is bored. That's all I use. Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast is rap. We out.